The colour object list is the roadmap to the design. I think the information here is so valuable when digitising that I have it open whenever creating a design. So first, let's learn how to open it and dock when necessary. Under the window menu, you will see it is listed in the docker flyout. Notice the keyboard shortcut is Shift L, which is the most efficient way to display the list. However, if you move to the toolbar flyout and select the docker toolbar, then the color object list appears here as well. The docker toolbar controls the flyouts that appear to the right of the workspace, and I place it at the top right of the work area where I think it's most convenient to open and close all the flyouts. Look across the top of the list and you can see the title. Next to the right is a pin. When you left click it will turn sideways and the list flies away to the right. One left click on the tab will display the list again. To lock it into place and prevent it from flying away, left click on the pin to make it face downwards. The X will close the list altogether and it will have to be reopened by following any of the procedures above. The icon is the fourth in from the left in the docker toolbar. The next row, first icon, will expand and compress the list to expose all the objects in the color blocks. In 4.2, if you select an object on the work area, then the list will expand and the selected items will be identified in the list with a blue border. The locate button will hide all other objects in the workspace, making it easy to identify any object. New to 4.2, if you move your mouse to a used color in the palette holding the shift key and the left mouse button down, it will display only that color block in the workspace. Note here you must have nothing selected to use this feature. While we're here, the first icon at the right end of the color palette will hide any unused colors. Before I click the icon, notice the small blue squares in each of the three chips. These indicate that the colors are used in the design and the active color has a dark border, but it is also indicated in the active color chip to the left. The first icon to the right of the color chip is the hide unused colors, so only those colors in the design show. Clicking again will unhide those unused colors. Back to the color object list. The plus and minus characters expand and close the color block. The second column displays the color and the third column is reserved to show the shape of each object. The next column lists the stitch order of the objects, followed by the icon representing the tool used to create the object, then the stitch type and the final column the stitch count for each object. The two icons at the bottom of the list with the question mark indicate that there is a combination of tools and stitch types. In the second to last row, I can see the objects have been branched and the stitch type is a run stitch. The last row is a column C and satin stitch. Along the top is a total count of the color blocks, number of objects in the design and a total stitch count. So you can see there's a lot of information to be gleaned from this list. I hope this has helped your understanding of this part of the software. Thanks for watching.